Where there is love, it is never truly dark. How can it not grow in a home like yours? Welcome, everybody, to Podcast of the Rings, and we are continuing our rewatch and review and retrospective Ooh. on Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. I'd forgotten that it was named that, and it just that shows. Lord of the Rings, The Rings of you Power. You need it. You need it. It has been proven over and over again that unless you spoon feed an audience to let them know what universe you are in, they will not know. Birds of Prey. Yeah. Um, um there's and then another... the Pennyworth one. The, oh, the, you didn't know they, what I'm talking didn't about. Didn't they rename it the, the Adventures of Batman's Butler or something yes. like that? Like, yes. They wild did. stuff. Wild. Like, honestly, kudos. You don't care. <laughs> neither do we. You just got to get people to, to click on your thing on HBO Max. I guess that's just it, though. Because, like, at one point, we make the argument, like, trust your audience. Trust your audience. Birds of Prey is a great name. But like the emancipation and, you know, but, but the emancipation of one um, Harley, Qu- uh, Harley Quinn yeah. was a great name. It was. Um, and, and that's the thing, like, they're, they're called Birds of Prey in the comics. And like every I knew who the Birds of Prey were and I don't read a lot of comics. Yeah. You didn't uh, like I, you know, I don't read, read the a few, comics. Like, I've read a few here and there. I knew who Huntress was because of, you know, Justice League Unlimited, the animated series and stuff like that. And, oh, sure, sure. And she's also, like, Batman's rogues gallery is one thing. Batman's, like, ladies gallery is a whole, like, What do you mean Huntress. rogues gallery? Uh, like, uh, all his villains. Like, Joker. Oh. Um, so, like, Batman and Spider-Man are, like, infamous for having, like, the best villains. You know, Batman's got Joker, gotcha. Killer Croc. Um, Killer who, Croc? I don't know Killer Croc. Killer Croc. Um, he's got uh, uh, Mr. Freeze, Poison right. Ivy, Penguin. Oh, Poison all... Ivy. Just so wonderful. Yeah. So wonderful. And then, uh, you know, Spider-Man's got obviously like the Sinister Six, Doc Ock, uh, right. Green, Goblin, Green Goblin, all those guys. But Batman, un- like, I mean, Spider-Man, you know, he's got Gwen Stacy and Mary Jane and stuff like that. but. Batman, Catwoman, Huntress, Poison Ivy, uh, Talia Al Ghul. Like, the man, Ooh. like, for how stoic and unloving he was, he was pretty loving. He threw yes. down. He threw, he threw down. down. <laughs> well, that's what being a billionaire will do for your status as well. Right. And Peter Parker's 20. You know what I mean? Like, he's still got yeah. time to be... Rico Suave, you know, um, but uh, yeah, Gwen Stacy's co- cool for like the young generation to look up to, right? She's not a sex pot. Catwoman no. is all sex. Oh it's- my, there's like a thing from like an animated movie where she does like a little strip tease, and I'm like, this is a DC animated movie, and she like you know unzips the front of the suit and everything. I was just like, oh my. Oh, this, this isn't is the Harley Quinn animated series? No, no, no. Series? No. Whoa. Yeah, it's Whoa. wild, and I approve. Yeah. I mean, even uh, Alicia Silverstone as Batgirl's pretty darn cute. Absolutely. And, I mean, like, that was the infamous thing because they finally, uh, a few years ago, or, God, it was probably, like, almost a decade ago now, um, they animated The Killing Joke, which is, like, the really famous Batman Joker story. Kind of Joker's origins. One bad night can change everybody. Um, and it's a very short story. So they decided to like add kind of a prologue to it. And it's where Batman sleeps with Batgirl. And it like went over rightfully so terribly. Cause like, no, 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 no. And I, and I honestly, I was kind of proud of the nerd community because fan service is obviously a very big thing. And like, and erotica or fanfic is different than would this character actually do that. Yes, exactly. And I'm sure there was, you know, a million Batman, Batgirl fanfics out there before this, but 
to make it quote unquote canon, like in an official DC movie, was like, nah, okay, time out, time out <laughs> on the floor, sir. So what's cringe about it? Is her because is that she's it's for like, Robin or is it just? It's like her father figure. Like that was that was the thing. That's right. I remember. And it's now. Commissioner Gordon's okay. daughter. Okay. So it's like. Oh god! Yeah, just like just not great. Incestuous power dynamics imbalance. Yeah. yeah, got it. Yeah, it's one thing when you're like lured to the dark side by someone who's like uh, of equal prowess and power, like a Catwoman is, right? With the same That's amount the same, of like, agency. All, all all of the women that Batman gets with, like they're equals. Like Catwoman right. is his equal. Huntress is his equal. Poison Ivy, Talia right. Al Ghul. Like, they dupe him, they fool him, they seduce him, like, and it's kind of the allure of that. It's like, oh, Batman's this stoic dark knight, but even he can't resist Catwoman. It's like, that's great. I love it. No, I wanted to kiss no one's lips more than Uma Thurman's in uh, oh, Batman. Oh, and Michelle Pfeiffer? The, have you seen the actual, like, the well, fact Well, I mean, that, I, would have, I would have gotten poisoned, even though... I, oh, yeah. Like... That's all I mean. But what yeah. was it, what about Michelle Pfeiffer? Or she played Catwoman in it was, yeah. well, it was Michelle Pfeiffer, right? Yeah. And there's it like was, the, yeah. the behind the scenes clip of her like when she whips the candles out, that's her. That's like For real? In, in one take. Whoa. Like un like I don't know how many takes it took, but like in one take she was like Whoop. She did it. She did all of it, and like the whole whole uh, set was like, "Oh my god!" Like started clapping. So it's that feels like the Spider Man moment where Tobey Maguire catches all of the, yeah. the things on the tray, but that took like a hundred shots. You know, it's actually good that we're talking about power dynamic attraction couples because I ship Galadriel and Halbrand. And for those of you that are joining us on this journey of the recap of Rings of Power, the Lord of the Rings colon Rings of Power. We're assuming you've watched this. We're not like acting like what's going to happen next. We're recapping yes. it with hindsight. So spoilers are out the window. <sighs> now that you look at it retrospectively, where her brother says to her in the last episode, you have to, to know the light, you have to touch the darkness. She literally has to meet Halbrand, a.k.a. Sauron, to know him well enough to like I want him to be an enemy. You brought that up in the watch along, by the way, plug for the watch along. Join the Patreon starting at two dollars, guys. Uh, Patreon.com slash pot of the rings. Um, but I, I agree with that point wholeheartedly. And when you well, said that's it, what I was, the, that's what the showrunners are trying to say. For sure. And that was a, you pointed that out. And I was like, OK, I like that a lot, actually. But the rest of this doesn't work like the rest of the, the how the, brand they're meeting. You mean? They're meeting out in the middle of the ocean on a a, a raft a that's drift. A, a drift. Like, like is is Sauron going through a midlife crisis as well? Was he like, I don't know, man, maybe being the evil uh, Valinor, like, it just isn't for me. Maybe I should just go be a blacksmith. Like, he's like a rich <laughs> kid that doesn't want his privilege or something like that. He's just like. I'm gonna t I'm gonna get my what what are they called like the little knapsack on a stick like I'm gonna go uh, hop on the nearest train and but as soon as he gets in trouble he calls daddy's credit card and he's back to Mordor that's all that happens in this whole story hundred <laughs> percent so if I remember correctly in the next episode we meet Adar which we haven't watched yet with our Patreon like yes. like Ben said go to our Patreon two dollars support us two dollars and. Watch it with us. Um, Adar overthrew him and staged a coup, from what I'm understanding. And but so that's, yeah, he okay. cast Sauron out. And somehow, this is what I don't know. Like, was Sauron living with these annoying humans that were adrift on this ship? Where was he headed? Was he, you know what I mean? Like, so like. Yeah. But. He definitely had just come into some ruin, which really, you know, I didn't think about this until this exact moment. If Adar can overthrow Sauron, Adar is big business. That is a that's a bad dude. And that's it's so unfortunate that we know now that that actor is not returning. It's so sad that that episode, you know, with the the Numenor charge and everything, and then like Hal Brandon at our meeting and him like being, oh, you don't remember me. That works in retrospect. Like, that's great stuff right there. And I'd love to see, you know, you see Adar, like, you know, it become the Southlands become Mordor. And then you see the last shot of Halbrand is him going back to Mordor. And, like, 
I was very excited for their interactions coming in this next season, but you know, whoever replaces Adar, I don't know who that's going to be. I haven't heard. I any. think they've already. I think there's been casting, and I think people kind of went, "Oh, that guy kind of looks like that dude that played Adar." Okay. Um, it's for me, it really like took the wind out of my sails going into season two, knowing it was going to be a different actor because that guy apparently like did like ran fuck. 10 remember, miles yeah, or something. Yeah, like to get like his sweaty, pale look and stuff. Yeah. Like he's got, that's Sean Bean going up, you know, Karadras yeah, energy. High, like, like, yeah, <laughs> mountain climbing instead of going in a helicopter. And believe me, I'm an actor. I don't know that I have to go do that in order to get into the character. Although I'm all for a routine that helps you get there. And what he delivered on stage, on camera, was unlike some acting that I've ever seen. And it was... It was amazing. Like, like, I know method acting can seem like it's all like who I think Robert Pattinson said it. Like, you never hear an actor talking about method acting for a nice person. They're always just being an asshole. Uh And that's that's very true in a lot of senses. But like, there was never any complaints about Daniel Day Lewis. Like, his wife would complain, be like, oh, my God, can you stop talking like Abraham Lincoln for the love of God? Um, But there is a power thing there, too. When you're Daniel Day Lewis, you don't people don't. They they do like yeah operate in your wake, you know what I mean. But that's the thing, like, but Daniel Day Lewis wasn't sending dead pigs and used condoms to Margot Robbie on the set of Suicide Squad or something. That's so true. So it's like, I think even Daniel Day Lewis understood what method acting actually is, and Jared Leto is just like, I'm playing Morbius, so I'm gonna slow the set by using my crutches all the time, and it's like, stop, this you're. This is Morbius. Like, yeah, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, I mean, he's problematic in so many different ways. That guy, for sure. But it's, it's like, yeah, I didn't hear any anything about any complaints about him being difficult on set or anything like that. Because I don't if know it, if he's a more. I don't know if he's a method actor though either. I just know that he was dedicated to like the physicality of it. Because like, what did the orcs do? They all run, you know. And, like, was that a way to, like, zone, get in the zone for him? I, I just can't – I just don't know for a fact whether it was method acting or his way of dropping in. Does that make sense? No, because that's method acting. I'm <laughs> so, like, you can – It's you not. Can be method phys- acting is all the time. Yeah, but – so you Method like, acting's all the time. So I guess. going for a run an hour before call is – getting in the zone like a warm-up yeah going for a run maybe but going for a five mile sprint sure. before every shoot when you're the main antagonist for a 10 episode season <laughs> like, sure I, I you know how we talked about this when adam i think was on the show i did i was cat and hot roof i was um whatever i can't even remember maggie i was the, the cat main, or with a with a roof? i was the cat I was okay, the, yeah. I, I sit around the roof. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, that roof was hot and made it to <laughs> It's my favorite the, show ever, as you guys can tell. The, I love it. The that roof show. was on fire. Yes. <laughs> so um I was still a, I was not I'm not claiming to be a great actor at this point. I was still actually adolescent in a lot of my ways, but like I would go sit on the side of the stage. I would do stretches for an hour before. I wouldn't talk to anyone for 30 minutes before. I was trying to get into the zone when I didn't know mm. how to get into the zone. Sounds yeah. like to me this is like it is a method to get into the zone. True. That's what I would say. And it worked. The I have physical nothing against exertion. This at all. Yeah. Yeah, I just I just I guess what I'm trying to say is not I guess. I'm uh, my point is I don't I wouldn't put that in the method acting category. I don't know if he also is a method actor. He may be and that may be part of his method. I just don't think going for a run and then going to uh, onto set is method acting. Okay. Do you want to fight about it? No. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> I'm just trying to get yeah. on the same page here. No, I, I agree. Uh, in a certain aspect, like, I don't know. For me, it's There's different. a different dedication, though. You're totally There's right. There's a different dedication, that, but even so much so that, like, you know, 
on the set of Wolverine in between Hugh Jackman was like, I was eating chicken breast and doing curls. I was like, that's different than, you know, what this guy was doing. Like, that is Hugh different. Jackman was shirtless the whole movie. So you just have to stay pumped up. Like it is different. Yeah. There's so, I would be interested to know what his motivation was to do that. It's a dedication for sure. And, and it must've just been the point of pure exhaustion. And then he had to act from that place. What does that, where did that, you know, maybe it was just an experiment with regards to that. Yeah. So you're right that we find Galadriel adrift in the ocean. She happens upon some of the worst humans you've ever met in your life who apparently have been attacked on their ship by a giant W-Y-R-M. Oh. A worm. A, a worm, not a warm. A, a, worm. a worm. A sea worm. Sea worm. Um, they find out she's an elf. They're really selfish. They don't want her on the board. But, like, Halbrand's already making eyes at her. <laughs> yeah, like, and we said that, like, the orcs attacked their their town or something. Like, were they the town that got, you know, sucked underground and then they oh. somehow made it to sea? They must have ex- escaped whatever was going on with the orcs. And okay. that would make me think at this point, Halbrand must have been overthrown and then he went to go live with these people as an outcast or something i'm just gonna be part of the people man like i'm I'm, I'm, (laughs) this is like when a politician like puts on like a hard hat and it's like i'm just getting in touch with you guys you're the true america it's like oh my god (laughs) like go back on your private jet and go to the next new hampshire or wherever you're going like i'm gonna work with my hands yeah Yeah, i want to i want to work the earth no you nailed it with with halbrand here he is tail between his legs upset hurt and he 100 percent is just like you know what maybe it is time for me to like rethink about my life yeah dude just man (laughs) just get that retrospective dude he's on his rum springer he really Um, is so he's upset. He's because, like, ultimately, he's not gonna die. Like, he can be discorporated, you know, like, he can yeah. be removed from his body, but he's like not gonna go anywhere, you know. So, Just like, like whatever every the billionaire, <laughs> <laughs> so, unless you're trying to go into a, a homemade submarine to go see the Titanic. Oh, um, God, <laughs> how. <laughs> The world got a little bit better that day. I can't say that. I can't say you that. Gotta I'm going to keep out. it. I can't. You but... got to cut that. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> it's just, how can you, there's, there's so many steps to get to that point. Like, so many warning signs. Like, I myself, just as a billionaire, if I got to step on the ship and I see that it's controlled by a freaking discount Xbox controller. I'm getting off. Red like, flags. So uh, what is this trip? A quarter million dollars? Cool. I found that. I'm a billionaire. I found that between my couch cushions. That's <laughs> right. A, yes. And on, I'm, I'm so protected six ways from Sunday. I'm going to make money off this trip somehow. Mm-hmm. Or I'm going to sue this guy. Like something. There's no way you can, you can do that. Like it's so. That's the craziest part to me. Is that I know we've dispelled the myth that all billionaires are um, like smart people. Right. Um, but they're advantageous people. They're opportunistic people. Well, they're they also may- thrill seekers because they ha- nothing is denied them. So at a certain point, too, you become like a, an adrenaline junkie. Like I if, guess. but like Oh, it's 100% a thing that very few people experience because they don't have that kind of whatever you yeah. want, sir. So you are going to jump out. You are going to go to space. You are going to try these new heights. I'm not saying let's do it in a homemade submersive vessel. That's the thing is that like I'll go in a military grade submarine. I'll go with James Cameron. Exactly. I'll I'll hang out with James Cameron on the set of Avatar or, you know, his next Titanic documentary. And I'll do that. I'll go on a NASA approved spaceship to do the orbit around the the solar system whatever. I'm not going to go to bumfuck nowhere <laughs> and if I get on a spaceship on Apollo 69 and the guy's like, "Hey, here's my PS5 Six- controller. <laughs> Don't worry. We're going to be good." I'm not going to be like, "You know what? I'm just that bored. Let's try it out." Like <laughs> 
someone cute. something tells me that all those people are alive and they just like something was going on like or you know like I'm, now they're at the cayman islands or something they're like somewhere that. just chilling you know i don't think that's the case because but, i don't trust but, anything uh, how could you? How could you? Like Dra- you uh, like Kendrick Lamar is. We're gonna get back to Lord of the Rings, I promise. Sure. But like Kendrick Lamar just dissed Drake in a song. Okay. And now and now all these like famous rappers like um, Rick Ross, Future, Metro Boomin, like and like all these guys are like unfollowing Drake and like oh this is like for me this is just PR. Everybody's gonna eat off this. Every like. If Drake comes out with a response track, if more people add to diss Drake tracks, it's just money for everybody. Uh, a rising tide raises all boats, and that's what all this is. Like, yeah. I don't trust anything on the internet. I think that's exactly right. Um, I actually have become the barometer for my sister, who will send me, like, great reels, wonderful reels. And then I have to be like, well, that's not real. <laughs> that's not real. <laughs> that's oh, not this real. boyfriend destroyed her girlfriend's makeup and it was a prank? Yeah, it's fake. No. Stop it. Or, or, like, the ones where, like, the person gets shot like a slingshot. She doesn't know it's not real or so. <laughs> we, we cut up. We're, we're walking around barefoot to get in touch with nature at this mall. It's fake. Stop. Stop making these people famous. I promise you, you're just paying their bills. Like, yeah. they don't care. They're not reading your comments. They don't care. You're stitching it. You're reposting it. You're commenting on it. It doesn't matter how funny your stitches are. It, you, I, fell down a, uh, I fell down a Matt Reif hole the other day, and I was so upset. <laughs> you know, like, I don't care about what a douche that guy is, but I found myself listening to some yep. bitch talk about it, and I mean bitch positively. And then, like, that, I still can't stop thinking about the one comment where one dude was like, women need to stop trying to bring this man down on his rise to success. Like, oh, my God. Ugh. Like, I don't need... <laughs> I want to rip my head off sometimes. It's it's so crazy, like, how everything just wants you to, like, it's just outrage nowadays. And that's, it's what sells. It, it's been it that just, way for a long time. And yeah. we're just all suckers for it. Because we all yeah. love drama. And we all love to talk about somebody. Speaking of Halbrand, uh, he, 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 the thing that you, you and I just couldn't get over while we were watching it um, is... Once, once Halbrand sacrifices all the bad humans, which was my first indicator that he was Sauron, because he like didn't try to save anybody, and he just ends up on the raft alone and saves Galadriel. To be fair, Galadriel doesn't try and save anybody either. No, because they kicked her off. You put this up. You you reminded me they kicked her out. That's true. They kicked her off the raft, and then the worm came, and she's not going to be like, "Come, people, let me help you." You know, she's like, "I'm going to get the fuck that way." Yeah, <laughs> you know, whatever. So it's a big worm. Yeah, she didn't. She did not have to save those people. Halbrand was with those people. It was his first non-heroic move, but it was questionable as to what happened, right? Because he comes out of mist. She, she doesn't know anyway. Um, <laughs> when they finally like start their will they won't they bickering, she's just. Ro- yes, wrapping yes, a rope. <laughs> yeah, my favorite part. The business, the law and order interrogation business is so great where she's literally just has a rope and she's just like tugging on a stick that isn't the sail. It isn't the rudder. Like because she they don't, they don't have a it. sail, by the way. Like they're just they're just floating. Uh, they are literally adrift. Yeah. And she's like can't even stand still and it's just like the, like, what a weird piece of direction. Yeah. It was very strange where it was like, just pull on this rope. Just pull. Like, okay, what about different business where, like, you're trying to tighten the raft to make sure, like, the like, the logs don't go apart or something? Like, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was unending, too. Then she lets it go, and then she picks it back up again. Yeah. The fact that she lets it go, and then, like, after their conversation, she's like, turns around and starts tugging again. <laughs> so, like, is stop it like, tugging! Is it like Chekhov's rope, where it then gets tied around her when they get in? Well, what that's ends what up they happening? should have been doing, is that, like, uh, she's she is building a sail. She is uh, making a safety right. harness for a storm that's coming, or something like that. Like, you could have given them business where like it's just something that they could have like 
said it with one line, but instead like, or closer. These are two very good looking people. No one's going to complain about a close up or like, you know, a one in one shot. But instead you have them in a two shot and her arm is clearly visible of just doing this. You know, you could crop it in a way where you can get it. Yep. Yeah, it's I've seen those videos. Have you ever seen the ones where it's porn? And yes, they cut, and they're like they're playing right. piano or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good it's for my so favorite great. things. It's so really good. Just when they might have lost us as an audience, we get to Elrond and Kella Brimbor, and Kella Brimbor's got like this, you know, sugar daddy glint in his eye, like, I need a tall tower in order to make a powerful thing. And and Elrond's like, I know what to do, Daddy. And he takes him to the dwarves. Yes. And they save the day, man. They really do. Like, I love um I love this interaction. And I love that he's the, they walk up to the gate. Um, and then he just goes, Oh, I'll be back. Go and walk home real quick. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's so weird it's so weird where it's just like you could have just had elrond go and be like i'll bring back uh you know durin and we'll get this thing started right sure because it makes it seem so obvious that you're on it like it's you know we're we were complimenting and we said it like i think it's like the next scene is um Aron deer and bronwyn like these sweeping shots of like her running back to the field like through her town right and right. it's like this is what we live for and it's so juxtaposed to them walking up to Durin's door, and it's obviously the volume or green screen, and it looks so bad. And then you just, like, have two people walk up. You can't even have them, like, ride a horse up or something and be like, all right, walk back home. It's probably, like, f- a five-day walk. I know we're elves, but, <laughs> like, that's still annoying. Like, I don't Why wanna... did you go there? <laughs> I didn't bring my AirPods. I don't have a podcast to listen to or something. Caliburn Moore is like, all right. <laughs> uh, I guess. Like, I've been on this earth for 2,000 years. What's another five days of walking? <laughs> but, uh, but this part is so great. Like, this whole Durin and Elrond. And this is what we were talking about. And I said it as soon as, like, he challenges him to the rock-breaking competition. Whoever tires out first. Uh, if Durin tires out, he gets an audience with the king. If Elrond tires out, he's banished uh, from khazad for life. And as soon as Elrond takes off his brooch and it's just like his undershirt, I'm like, this is good costuming. Because I don't know uh, if... Because we were, co- we were complaining about how they yeah, how, uh, how Rondier's uh, PIC, buddy. yeah, his buddy. Um, PIC, what does that mean? Per- partner in crime. Ah, uh, P-I-C. Yeah, cool. that's good. Cool. Uh, how, like, his costuming didn't, like... Like, elves aren't buff, but, like, they're lean and wiry, and, like, you just know they're strong. Because, like, right. their strength, like, comes from, you know, the trees and stuff like that. So they don't have to be... Like, like we said, Orlando Bloom isn't buff in any kind of way, but you never <laughs> doubt his strength. Um, Actually, like, did you ever see, like, him naked paddleboarding with K- Katy Perry? Man is ripped. He's gifted. In yeah. multiple ways. Multiple ways. Like, it's so unfair. <laughs> like, well, you just... don't get to have it all, okay? <laughs> he, he probably doesn't. He's probably a piece of shit. <laughs> but no, I'm, no, he's not. <laughs> but no, he's, he's gifted. He definitely had two things to help him paddle that day. He had, he had his paddle and, and had he had the flies. rudder. Yeah, yeah. He had the, <laughs> she had the life preservers. <laughs> They're, they're, they could go out to sea. They'd be fine. <laughs> they could be a drift. You know what I she's tugging blame, on uh, off screen? I wouldn't screen. blame her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you want to join our Patreon for $5 yes. a month and view us do these horrible things. But it, it's such good costuming that like Elrond looks strong in this. I believe him. And it's like really, really good to where Durin like swings his axe. Breaks in half. Uh huh. And you see Elrond like a clean break. Clean break. No, nothing hesitant about it. But then you, when you see Elrond like grip the axe and like it's a perfect like he winds up to it to where uh you know we've gone to the Ren Fair a few times and it was so funny this like six four like two hundred fifty pound dude goes up to the you know the ring the bell hammer thing oh sure sure and he doesn't do it 
And then I go, and it's all about your momentum of how you swing the hammer. And I did it, and I was like, "Oh, okay." And it's just <laughs> like, like he swings it just like that. Where like you, uh, a rotation so, like a yeah, golf. Almost. That's how Elrond swings it, and Durin swings it. You know, just like pure strength. You know, obviously born of this natural like talent. Up and down. Yeah. Uh, and he breaks it into three pieces, and I'm like, "Oh, that's good," because it shows how strong Elrond is. Stronger than Durin, and you like right then and there. I knew that he was gonna throw. Like I knew he was gonna uh, pretend to lose. I was like, oh, yeah. he's gonna. He he. An elf would never lose this competition ever. So I guess that's just what is confusing about this whole series in general, and the confusion doesn't stop coming in places. Yep. Because you know we're gonna get to Adar, and then we're gonna get the introduction. I'm so excited to watch this episode with you because like my favorite orc actor of all time is just giving it his all and all these orcs that like are like you know third second rank you know minions yeah. are fully plastered and just like lord of the rings the movie great you know so like there's the detail and the money there and then there's like the attention to detail and storytelling with durin in moria not in moria where are they they're in moria they're, they're in moria doing. yeah because um, uh, the mithril I forgot. They're in Moria. Like, we get to meet the wife. And, and, and like, even the way the dwarves are wearing their, like, prosthetics and Yeah, their nose looks ears. great. Their beards look great. Everything looks so good. So it's the inconsistencies for me that really make me, like, that will just sharply pull you out of it. Right? Like, why is she playing with the rudder? Or why does that wood tree... Yeah thing look like it shouldn't be on that man so like were there certain things that were out of their control that they didn't have the time to be detail oriented on you know that i guess that's all i mean is like the those little minor inconsistencies keep this from being great yeah it, it is and it, we're, like it's it's just so tough because we've never explored you know, I'll, I'll say it to death, like, it, Galadriel's this larger-than-life being, and we've never just hung out with her. And that's what this show is asking of us. Sure. Is that Galadriel, Kate Blanchett, has only come in, bathed in white light, to give the perfect advice, to know everything, to see everything. And granted, this is a much younger Galadriel, but we've, we're we still just hanging out with her. We're yeah. still just, like, learning along with her. And we've never done that before. And that's a big ask from an audience when... All six movies that she's in, she's either saving the day, giving sage advice, or just standing there looking godlike. Sure. And now she, we're seeing her be a child or her being unsure or what have yeah. you. Yeah. And that is hard. But I think if you can make it over that hurdle, you can still you can appreciate this, what, what, you're, what she's going through. But don't give me visuals or weird things interactions that pull me out of it give me every reason to believe this you yeah. know um, for sure so, so elrond loses like we're just gonna go beat by beat so we've done the galadriel halbrand story it's basically just them floating along it that's, that's the thing is that we don't get galadriel on the mainland till this next episode and it's like good lord that's a long time which is sort of fine because like then the introducing the numenorians is a lot it's a lot. And just in time, like, you don't have the time to introduce a new storyline. And you want to give the dwarves their fair intro here. Because you're also, let's not forget, getting a little... Oh, God, I forgot. Two of the most unsavory things happen this episode. Oh. Nori's dad breaks her his ankle. Oh, yeah, tough. Because the stranger is... I don't know, upset, <laughs> like disturbs the forces and you see and hear there's nothing worse for me on screen. It's, it's a tough ankle break to watch. I didn't really like I forgot that it was like, ugh. I think I knew it was coming when I first watched it. And so I, I when I can sense that this is what's about to happen, the one the ones that are the worst where it's like all of a sudden someone has twisted their arm and there goes a bone and you didn't get the wind up. You didn't yeah. get the armor, the uh, hammer swing leading up to it. But um, that happens, and it is a pretty gruesome, pretty gruesome break. And then you get the black pus ooze 
out of the cow's teat? Or is that the first episode? No, no it's the first that's episode. This, but they do the show episode. it to you. Yeah. They show it to you again in the um they show it to you again in the preview. Oh, the like recap. Previously yeah. on. That's right. So it's just the ankle break, but well, I can't get over that. That that was pretty uh terrible. They, um, and they lingered on it. I'm so mad. I hate yeah. them. Um so Elron and like as he's being, he's like, "Will you escort me to the door? I've lost." So and smart, then, so smart. He's so good. He, I will say, he is very crafty. Yeah. Um, and this is probably might be the best scene in the show where yes. Durin's like, a "20 years might be a blink of an eye to an elf, but it's a long time for us." Even you know, dwarves live to what, like 150, 200 years. They got a few hundred years of life yeah. in them, I think, like, at, at, but at I got, oldest. Yeah. I got married. I had two kids. Like, you missed everything. Like, you couldn't write. You couldn't do anything. And somehow... But is that, does that sound like a friend who's like, hey, you never call me, bro. And like, do you call me, bro? <laughs> like, Turin didn't different. send out a message. Elves are of the world. Dwarves stay in their mind. This is, the, this is you selling your extrovert friend that is going out and... Hanging out with everybody and learning everything. That this is your introverted friend who's just like, yeah, it it kind of like not everything is with you. Like when you're here, I'm very happy to see you, but you're the one that comes to see me. I don't like, and you That's know that actually really thoughtful of you, Ben. It is, and because well, because you're was, an extrovert. Eh, you're ambivert. And I think I'm a little bit ambivert. Okay. Co- COVID okay. really changed me. <laughs> oh, it it ruined it ruined the extrovert. It took yeah. the it took the extrovert down for sure. And also, elves are very discriminatory towards dwarves, so I don't know how welcome Dern would be in Rivendell. Honestly, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, this is all the precursor to that. So what we're seeing, what we're building toward, is where the disdain for dwarves and elves come from. Hmm. Okay. Because we yes. haven't we haven't experienced that yet. They are friends. They did have a um, relationship. If, if, it doesn't I, seem like it seems like Elrond's the only one that knows anybody in Moria. Well, I'm just saying there isn't like I hate the dwarves yet. Like elves don't have all that opinion yet, where that gotcha. it's like passed down by line. And I think maybe what they're trying to, to give us a story for is like what happens in Eregion. Do do the elves abuse them for mithril or something like that so we just haven't gotten to that part of the story yet where the years long hatred has actually started i i'm i'm not disagreeing with you but i'm saying like even when durin his father durin the first is like they only they're they're just here to use us it seems like there's something that's already been there that's fair there's probably there's probably maybe just prejudice in general yeah it's, for sure but it's but it's no like we're not a dwarf you know, I hate I hate the elves. I don't know. I'm trying. <laughs> Duty, I'm just trying to skibbity, okay? I'm just starting to skibbity, okay? Uh, skibbity Riz. <laughs> yeah. Skibbity Ohio Riz, bro. Yeah, that's what that's all it is. You know, Elrond's got it, and Durin hates that he's got the skibbity Ohio Riz. Um, what's up, kids? Um, but... <laughs> I came up, I came up with bad Rizma the other day. Oh, okay. Yeah, bad Rizma. I am good. so mad that TikTok I sent you about uh so before we recorded last Monday, guys, we were talking about our Dune episode and like the Benny Jesert series oh. and I literally said there has to be something with Benny and the Jets and the Benny Jesert. And but, both but of Benny us Jesuit. at the same time we sang that. And yes. then literally a day later a TikTok comes up and it's like a full now I'm obviously these people didn't steal anything. We said it before we recorded. We didn't post it like nothing. But and it, it was, just, was in the ether. It yeah. Was... And it's just like, we're obviously not the only ones to think that, but it was just so funny that a day later, a fully realized edited sound mix song. She's of playing Benny... Vi- Viola. On yeah. It, it yeah. was so funny. If you can find it, uh, we'll post it in the discord. Yeah, We'll or share it. We'll share it. Yeah. It, the timing of it was insane. Alex it came was. up with last night where I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna come in my Maya. <laughs> like I can't do it right. Hold on, <laughs> you know. What I-, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> like that's funny, but I feel like someone's already done that too. Yeah. Um, I couldn't commit. I didn't commit. But the Ben Jesuit one is very clever. It is. Um, good. I liked it. I'm reading uh, the sixth book of Dune right now too. So better hurry up so we can talk. Oh about my it. gosh, you need to catch up. Yeah. Um. 
So we get this lovely scene with Durin and his wife. Uh, the dinner is so great. Um, he wants, like, they don't even know about the Mithril yet. That's kind of like the big tease at the end of this episode. And that's why Durin the first is like, he's like, he, he didn't come for the Mithril. They don't know about it. And he's like, oh, they're only going to use us the, until they find out about it and stuff like that. He wants Durin the second to help build a tower with Celebrimbor. Right. Lovely scene. I love like the the set dressing is so great on this. The table looks good. The roaring fire, like everything that Gimli says, you know, roaring fire, malt beers, meat fresh off the bone. All these things are very present. I love it. And then the tree, the sapling that uh, Elrond gave him is where the quote is from. Uh, love will always grow even in the darkness. It will find the light. Chef's kiss. This scene is so good. You really do feel the 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 lifelong friendship between these two. But you still get like that dwarvish stubbornness where he, like the whole time Durin's like, oh, he's not staying for dinner. Oh, he's not staying for dessert. Like, it's, it's, it's so great. The, and the it's, wife it's, is, is, is like, you need this breath of fresh air that the, these actors give us and the dwarves themselves give us. They're really, really good. I couldn't agree with you more. And, and that's why I'm saying it's a just excellent storytelling all the way around. They must have known that they had it in the pocket when they were writing this because yeah. Elrond tricks him. Elrond, and what I love is like Durin's mad, but he also wants to forgive him. Yeah, he wants to show him his family. He wants to show him everything he's I done. Know. Like he takes him on the the open facing elevator to show him the the kingdom of Moria for a reason. It's looking great. It's thriving. And you know, well, this was what was interesting too is when Elrond steps back into Moria. He's been here before, but he's literally aghast when he's walking back into it after having been gone for twenty years. And he even says, like, you've done a, a lot, which is why he's going to them in the first place, because he knows that they could get a tower erected yeah. within, what is it, 10 months or by spring or something crazy like that. You're out of your mind, Caleb Brimbor. But um, he's impressed. And it was such a, this is why we were talking about it, too, in the first episode. We're not only seeing and hanging out with Gladriel, we're hanging out with Elrond, who hasn't fully rounded out as, as an elf either. And yeah. he doesn't know the impact that his absence can have on people. And it's just, this was such a good episode because my favorite anime that I've been watching free Rin, um, just ended. And that's basically her entire, like the, that's the whole point of this. Just, you have to watch it. I really think you'll love it. Um, it's the whole point of this is that this elf goes like, she's an elf mage lived for 2000 years. And oh, she's we were finally this before. Yeah. Yeah. She's finally learning like the value of like, uh, life like she's never like she's never taken a student because elves are very rare in this fantasy world um she's only met like two other elves in her whole life um but oh, why wild yeah uh and so just like she's never taken a student because you know human lives are so short in comparison but she's starting to like take in the smaller moments and jess when i say i wept at this finale like a baby like Penguin was looking at me weird, like, you you good, bro? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so highly recommend Free Run to anyone listening. It's on Crunchyroll. I think you still get two weeks free, and the season just ended, so you can binge watch it. Love 22 it. minute episodes. You will not Love regret it. it. Okay, great, let's check it great out. Slice of life fantasy and an amazing. Honestly, we could probably cover it on this podcast. Whoops. Um, but uh whoops. <laughs> whoops. 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 Did I just slide that in there? Whoops. <laughs> How did that get in there? I Oops. love that that Toby Maguire like. How, how did, did that, that get, get there? in there? <laughs> oh, Toby! Yeah, your yeah. legacy will live on for God. generations in memes. How um, he even became famous, I'll never know. But carry on. He's a great actor. That's how he became famous. That's it. I know. But look at that face. It's a great boyish face. He just never grew out of it. It's just it's strange to see it on no, a thirty year old. No, he grew up into it better. He looked like a pockmarked acne bro for a very long time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he looks awkward as fuck, dude. <laughs> and that's why he's the perfect Peter Parker. <laughs> totally. I'm not saying he isn't. I'm just saying like, how did someone look through that and pass and go, yep, star quality. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. It's more, it's more impressive to me than me trying to tear him down. I'm not trying to tear him down like Matt Reif, guys. Oh, yeah. I'm not his type anyway. <laughs> so. Yeah. 
So we move over. So I think that's the whole, yeah, that's the whole dwarf story. Elrond dwarf story is just yeah, like yeah, him. Yeah. It's, it's really great dialogue, though. Really great character interaction. So we move over to Arondir and Bronwyn. They discover that the whole town has basically been sucked underground. Right. And they find so a I tunnel. So I don't think that's Halbrand's world, but, like, I think something must have happened. Yeah, similarly. something in the Southlands. They're in the yeah. Southlands where Mordor is going to be. Uh, they get the town gets sucked underground and th- this is Bronwyn goes back and tells everyone, hey, this town got sucked underground. And of course, like, I don't believe you. Who's talking over here? Like, yo, you're in love with the elf. Uh, I don't believe women. I don't believe women. Uh, by the way, the the bartender butcher, whoever the head guy is, he's got like a sleeper buff dad bod build. Oh, like, you don't do a naked sans right. shirt look sans apron got... like leather apron that's all he's got on <laughs> he like he i don't know if he was like he's just built different like that or he like worked out but he was just like costumer i don't need a shirt put what put a, a meat cleaver choice. in my hand and i'm good what a Love weird it. you know what that guy he spends all his days surfing in new zealand that's what that guy does heck yes that's when absolutely he's a he's a silver fox he hasn't lifted a weight in his life that's just pure nature strength right yeah, there 100 percent, 100 percent. so she goes back and this is like the problem i have is that this is a very good scene like in general like tension wise but you need to show a rondier doing something like he's crawling you mean in the when tunnel he's crawling yeah one he doesn't need a lantern he's an elf He's totally. an elf. Like, totally. It's an easy way to show elves can see in the dark and have amazing vision. Two, you need to have him like secretly like knife, like just like huh, like a, a orc comes out of the wall or something, just like right up the throat right there and then keep moving. But instead, he runs away and then he gets snatched from like he gets snuck up on. And it's like, oh, come on, man. I'm not saying or- orcs aren't sneaky. That's their main thing is being sneaky. But you, you got to have him do something. You got to have him do something. He would not sense them. Yeah. Because, like, he's solely focused. Or maybe he's just a bad elf. Because he's solely focused on the pond of water with the bubble. And then 20 hands grab him. Yeah, it's not like one hand or something like that. Like, literally, there's like five orcs behind him. And it and- works for, like, the horror aspect. But it doesn't. This is where I'm talking about the details, right? When you you take two seconds to analyze that, it doesn't make sense that that yeah. would happen to him. Again, it's like the bubbles are a great thing as they're moving closer. Like there's obviously someone following him, but it's like, I don't know. It, it just, he needed to do, he needed to kill one or two orcs before this moment. You can, you can have them sneaking up on him because like, you know, he's battle weary or something like that. Or, you know, something happens underwater where like his hearing or some kind of senses gets dulled, uh, but the lantern gets blown out (laughs) something like that just like but there's no excuse for like it was just a very frustrating thing to watch um but we go back to what's her kid's name is it toby or something like that oh theo so i was i wasn't too far off with toby no Um, you weren't actually uh, so Theo still has his dark dagger, sword hilt, whatever he's got. Oh yeah, he and stole the thing. He, yeah, found yeah. it. He sees this is uh, this is also like weird timing where like he sees an eye under the floorboards, and then we cut to you know whatever else we cut to. Then we cut back to when Bronwyn runs back home, and the floorboards are all torn up. The house is mm. torn apart, but there's no orc there, and Toby. Theo uh, is hiding in in a little cupboard. Uh, what that cupboard is for, besides hiding, I don't know. But we don't know. And he he's like, "Get out of here! Get out of here!" There's an orc. I'm like, "Well, why did the orc go back into the hole? I don't know." But anyways, Bronwyn is about to leave, but then she's like, "No, I'll hide in this thing here in this uh, closet instead." And great orc makeup. Truly terrifying orc design. Really, really great. They have a fight. Uh, Bronwyn uh, wins. And I kind of like the cut where, like, she's about to cut his head off. And she, like, swings down. And then it goes to her putting the, the head down at the bar. Great stuff. Great, Very great good. editing. Um, and basically convinces, okay, this is your proof if you wanted it, old buff barkeeper. 
Uh, so Dad. <laughs> yeah, so they start packing up to leave, and the last thing we see is uh, Theo packing up his dark spear, basically. Which I think had blood on it. Yeah, like he cuts it, cuts himself, and then it like kind of glows when it gets blood on it or something like that. Well, the the sword itself, or the you know whatever we learn it later that it's a key. It grows when it has blood, so it like that's it what actually, it does. Yeah, because like you you stab yourself with it to get the blood, and then it like reconstitutes. Yeesh. I know, yeah, yikes. But you're okay. You're so right. The kid's hiding. The orc is gone. The kid tells the mom to go. The mom goes to go, doesn't try to get the son out of the cupboard. This thing, like, she doesn't grab a weapon. She doesn't, like, no, 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 come on, Theo, let's go, let's go. Like, she doesn't do anything besides not leave and then hide. Like, and, like go if get the help. And, like, already ravaged everything, what is the orc doing there still? I don't know. It was, so it you're was... totally right. It's weird. Yeah. Very, very strange. Um, but great uh, like when the orc comes out it's very scary it's very well done but weird you get the setup sense, you get the sense of how dangerous they are it takes yes. two of them to subdue them and these are yeah, not natural like, fighters and this thing like we've we've been surrounded by aragorn legolas boromir where they're dispatching you know 20 orcs without breaking a sweat normal people normal townsfolk which we only see you know like burning the the rohirrim like the the rohan countryside of them running away they're very susceptible to orcs. Like, they're just, like, not everybody's a fighter in Middle-earth, and that's totally fine. So, like, you see, like, how how much damage one regular orc can do against normal people. And these orcs are also a little bit more powerful than your, like, hobbit orcs, too. I think there's, like, some dil- diluting, um, diluting of, like, the orcs' strength as you go okay. on. That's why the uruks... The Urukai were so important because they were like, yeah. these are like scary, you know, Very, half men. For sure. Um, so then we get, we fast forward or God knows what, we get back to the very compelling stranger <laughs> sequence where Nori's like just trying to talk. Doesn't she suck? Oh God, it's too much. It, this is so, like, this is why the Harfoots are the worst part. One, because her doing the ASL or the... Nori. HSL, uh, yeah. Harfoot Sign Language, uh, for her name. What are you doing? <laughs> Harfoot Sign Language. I'm Nori. <laughs> what do you like? W- stop. You're not doing it. She never does it again. They never do a sign they, language. They didn't thing do it again. before. They didn't greet each other. Did they greet each other with it in the first they episode? They don't go, hi, Nori. <laughs> you know, they like, don't no do one any does of that. Answer. Yeah. <laughs> And then like her, like you, you hate the the cow udder thing. I hate when she like takes the snail out and eats it. Oh, like, no, it bothers you. It's like it's like those ASMR like mukbang streams. Like and then like he eats the snail. But I will say, great force perspective with like the snail like is like the size of her head. And then when like and she has to like you know take the slug out and slurp it. And then he just like takes the snail. And it's like a little you know bite sized candy. He goes Hoo! so yeah, great. Yeah, great force perspective there. Um. But then this part infuriated me so much is that she's I don't okay so they're about to migrate but they need to raise this tent. What? Why? They need to raise it right now. You can't. You can't wait. Nori's like five minutes late because this naked giant is like just trying to eat some snails. Um, and this old hag, the the chief's wife. Is like, hey, uh, one, of, one of his wives, I think, by the way, yeah, one of them. fair. It's just like, hey, Nori's dad, why don't you help? Like, why don't you help? Because I'm telling you to help. And then, of course, it like the, the rope snaps. And instead of just like getting out of the way, he decides to try and Superman the thing and hold up this entire giant tent by himself. His ankle snaps. And then immediately, I swear to God, he hadn't even hit the ground yet. And they're like, oh, he's, uh, we're going to leave him for dead. <laughs> we're going to leave him for dead. And he's, then he, Nori gets well back dead. and he might as well be dead. And she's already like, he can't make the migration. We're just going to have to leave him behind. Like, he hasn't even had, yeah, ankle injuries suck. You have to give him at least like a day, an hour, five minutes. Like, it was. I don't the know. Most... Ankle is one of the most complicated breaks on the planet, and he a hundred percent broke some. Stuff. He broke it for sure, but it's just like they are. These are not good people. No, these are not nice people. These are not like 
This is not a community. They keep These saying that. These are not that. hobbits that you like aspire no. to. Granted, like Saxville Bagginses aren't what you aspire to. These are either. all Saxville Bagginses. Yes. They, like that, that's all they are. She's a Saxville Baggins like times 10. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she really is. She's like, you never do it. But like the yeah. whole, it's, it's one thing if, uh, I don't know. If they're going to migrate, why are you setting up, like, this complicated camp then? If you're going to migrate in a few days or whenever they're going to do that, like, why, like, it should have been them tearing down, like, just make it, you're tearing down the camp. Sure. Not setting up Weird. a tent. So Isn't it's there like a this, festival, though? I think it's a festival that they'd end up doing, like. Festival these nuts. Like, that's what <laughs> I say to her. Like, the, the scene pissed me off so much more than I remember of it pissing me off. Like. I couldn't believe how much this angered me because I remember watching this and I was like, wow, they're kind of like mean about them just kind of leaving them behind. Um, but I didn't realize like how cold blooded they were about this, where it's like, you're still getting me to like these people. I'm still supposed to be. Am I rooting for this for these Harfoots? Besides, you haven't earned enough clout. You know, you can hate the Saxville Bagginses, but like Bilbo and Frodo. Totally fine. Yes. But also, you see the other hobbits drinking at the bar, showing off their big pumpkins, like gardening. <laughs> even even the scowling neighbor with Gandalf. Smiles like, at Gandalf. Smiles at the fireworks because the kids love him. And then he's like, oh, yeah, my wife's here. Urgh. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's a good That was a good that Thank was you. Good appreciate face. it. Join the Patreon to see that face. Um, <laughs> but you... Even in those moments, you see, like, you know what? Even the most scowling neighbor loves when kids are laughing and happiness is in the Shire. Sure. But this is yeah. a setup! Yeah. This is straight up fucking Tupac outside the Vegas nightclub, man. Like, this is some real shit right here, and I'm, I'm <laughs> fucking pissed about it. So I think our takeaway is... This is not getting better on rewatch. It's getting worse. The Harfoots are getting worse. Like, yeah. th there is so much good stuff with Galadriel, with Bronwyn, with, um, with the dwarves, obviously, is like the, probably the best out of this episode easily. The Harfoots are legitimately the worst. And I, I think both Nori and her Sam are great actors. I think they're really good actors. Po but Poppy. Poppy, thank you. Perfect Sam name, by the way. Great it's so Sam good. name. It's so like A plus. Um, Nori and Poppy are actually good actors, but just like even when like oh he's drawing the the constellation. Who the fuck cares? What are you doing? <laughs> and then he kills the fucking yeah. Fireflies. I forgot about that. <laughs> like you have. Trapped these fireflies in lanterns, which, you know, A plus innovation, by the way. Sure. Great, great little extra thing. They're like, oh, they're not little candles. They're fireflies because these sure. are little, little harfoots. And then he releases the fireflies and forms a constellation. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I might as well. I Whoa. <laughs> it's Orion's belt. <laughs> I don't um, know where they are, but I can help you. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to help you find these stars. Oh, that seems like a very possible task <laughs> for a two foot hobbit. Got wow. it. Wow. Uh, I'm not saying like hobbits. Uh, that's the whole point of it is that they do bigger things than what people expect, but. You don't know anything about astrology, astronomy. What are you doing? What are you, you talking about? You don't know about? that this man doesn't need your help, too. Like, like, why, why? Go let him yeah. go figure it out. He's gonna yeah. be. <laughs> He's eight feet tall. He's gonna be okay. <laughs> but uh, then, like, he forms the constellation, and then, like, the fireflies die, and they're like, oh. You had them in a prison. <laughs> they were an unpaid labor force. Their life was not better. <laughs> Their life, they had a, you know what? At least Saruman slash Gandalf gave them a moment of freedom to form a constellation before they died. I bet you that was the best 30 seconds of their fucking life. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Hands down. So if you agree with us, you can join our Patreon now going to patreon.com forward slash podcast of the rings. You can also yell at us on X at pod of the rings. One of them at Poder pod on Instagram. Can That's we? Okay. This is, I will give me the socials. I yeah, will unify these fucking apps. You have 
them. Do it. I will. You have uh, them. Okay, so over before we head out, we're over an hour right now. Um, what are your overall thoughts about like this episode in retrospect? Yeah, if it wasn't for the dwarves, I don't know that I would give a shit, honestly. Yeah, um, they are the lifeblood of this show, for sure. They they come in, they kick down the door, and they're like, we're here. And it's great. There's some stuff that's redeemable. There's some Galadriel, Halbrand stuff, a little bit. It's, nope. ov- it's overkill. Um, there's nothing redeemable. Oh, yeah, about we Hal- didn't Hal- even Hal- mention her Jesus allegory as she's floating down underneath the ocean. She, something l- Legitimately happens, right? on a cross. She's floating on a cross, a la Jesus, and Halbrand saves her. Yeah. It is Jesus, though, for sure. It's a, it's a. It's not, it's not even allegory. It's just Jesus. Like. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. And also, she's dim as fuck. Because he's like, orcs slayed our town. She goes, what? you must help me. Why, are you a king? You know, like, oh, she God. is not smart. And granted. She's so, like, no, no, no. Okay. She's not 25. She's yeah. not like a college sophomore or something like that. She's a ten thousand year old being. But she her shouldn't revenge be... is clouding her opinion somewhat. But somewhat. She's a, she's a dummy. She's a dummy. Also, she's a dummy. Everyone who didn't think he was Sauron first thing is also a dummy. You heard me. I'm calling you a dummy. Um. Yeah. I don't know. It's just not good. I'm ready for some new Minorian stuff. Um. I have. You know, actually, one of my favorite characters, like I said, we're going to have some of my favorite orcs coming up. Like, one orc okay. in particular is just excellent. And then Antimo, who is, like, the kicks, like sidekick of the two oh, guys. Oh, yeah, he's great. He's but great. We had, we had, uh, Alex and I interviewed him. He's, yeah, I remember. I uh, remember listening to that episode. That's right. That's right. Um, adorable, sweetie. I remember when Alex first watched him, he's like, I don't know about this guy. I was like, oh, no, he's perfect. He's not supposed to. He's not good at this He's a himbo. Stuff. Yeah. Oh. He, and that guy's the definition of a himbo, and I love it. So I'm excited for those two things. It's just ultimately, it's just not good. This is not the strongest episode of the season. It's just not. And the dwarves they, give us something to look forward to. The dwarves give us something to look forward to, and I'll, like I, it's beating a, a a broken drum over here. But it's just like this. This thing should have been seven episodes. Eight, even if you just cut out two episodes, eight episodes, you tighten this thing up. Yeah. You don't have Galadriel floating for two episodes, and you're good. Yeah, totally. Well, join us for the watch that we would love to have you join us. And you're supporting our show, which, you know, who doesn't need support nowadays? I know I need support. So go to our Patreon, please. It's in the liner notes. Go check out um, myself or Ben doing some Twitch occasionally. Killing bugs. Killing bugs. Until next time, friends. Mayor Paz, meet again. (laughs) 